Hey, welcome back to Project X, where we're gonna bring this SVHO Yamaha back to its former glory. It was nice having Dean in here on our last episode where I got to find out a little bit more about what's going on with this jet ski. We do have a concern with this engine. He's burning a lot of oil. There wasn't hardly anything showing up on the dipstick, and our friends at SBT have probably gonna help us out with a little bit of rebuild on that. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna start disassembling this entire jet ski. I'm gonna get some of these panels off of here because I think we're gonna try and do something for Dean on getting some wrapping done and maybe some of these repairs done on this as well. And we're also gonna start pulling the engine and getting that out of the actual jet ski to get it ready for disassembly. So stay tuned. This season of Project X is brought to you by SBT, the largest supplier of high quality jet ski parts in the world. This Yamaha FX SVHO has seen better days, so we need to give it a facelift and a full engine rebuild. We decided to disassemble the jet ski as much as reasonably possible. We'll be getting it wrapped, so having the body panels off in advance will really make the job easier. We also need to pull the engine out to tear it down and rebuild it as good as new. So again, remember, we're just going ahead and taking all the body panels off right now. I'm stripping this down. It's gonna be a lot easier to wrap and take care of this body work that's needed on this thing right now. Also opens up the little bit of the engine. I don't need to remove the panels. You don't need to remove the panels to service the engine on this, other than that crossbar that I just took off. I'm just to go ahead and prepping this for what's coming down the road. Removing and tearing down the engine from any jet ski can be challenging. Not a tech out there that won't spend more time looking for where they put their tools than they actually doing the work. This one came with its own set of challenges. The key to any mechanical project is organization. Honestly, when it comes to something you've never done before, if you're not sure, everyone has a camera in their pockets these days. Taking pictures of what you disassemble is a great way to remember where it goes. Also, if it's really complicated, you'll see I'm putting all the screws back in the positions where they were, so I'm not mixing them up when I put this back together. Makes it easier to find where they're at and I'm not chasing it down all the time. Taking your time is critical. Not pulling too hard on these plastic panels without looking for any hidden screws, which is very common on a lot of these, are all good places to start with. And great things to remember. Keeping your stuff organized and everything put away is also a great thing to do. After removing most of the body panels and trim, we were finally ready to start preparing the engine to be lifted out. Yamaha recommends three points on this, which makes it a little bit of a unique and challenging way to remove this engine. Because they almost want it vertical, so it's a little bit of a challenge to remove this engine. Lifting the engine out of the jet ski came with a whole host of other obstacles. But after a little problem solving and a little trial and error, the engine came out. Now to begin the teardown process. I think there's something going on with the rings and if uh, things go as planned, I know SBT has some, some pistons and some new rings for us to put in this engine. Uh, once we start getting it apart, we'll kind of do some inspections to find out what's causing this oil issue that we have right now. Um, but as for now, we got it out. Next step, tear it down. So you can see right now we do have the engine out. I also got it on a little bit of a, a makeshift stand that's gonna give me a little bit of an easier place to work on it than just on the ground. I've also removed like the intake manifold, the starter, some of the other, uh, other items that just kept the weight off a little bit while I put it up here. Today we're really gonna keep diving into tearing this thing all the way down. We wanna get the camshafts out, the cam chains. We wanna get the the cylinder head off and start trying to look at the internals of this. And we're gonna go through some of the important things about using the coupler tool to be able to rotate the crankshaft, about getting everything in top dead center before you remove the camshafts as well. And we're gonna go into a little bit of all of that as we go. But we're gonna start tearing this down. One thing you're gonna to wanna to do, especially if you haven't done something this big, is give yourself a very clean, empty workspace. This way you're not cluttered. This way you don't have things all over the place. If you're not sure of where that bolt goes when you're putting it back together, it makes it a lot more difficult. So put bolts with components if you need to to help 
kind of remember where they go. You'll see that I've done some of that. I, I put some of the bolts where they were originally, so I know where they're at when I put this back together. If you're also having a little bit of trouble, get some sandwich bags. Put all those bolts in a sandwich bag and, and label it intake manifold bolts or starter bolts or exhaust manifold bolts or anything like that just to help give yourself the reminders of where things go because sometimes these will take a while to, to really get down and, and put back together. So we're going to start taking this all apart and, and uh, see what we can find out internally with this engine. With parts provided by SBT, we will be replacing the cables, the impeller, as well as a full engine rebuild. Taking a look at the condition of your spark plugs is always a very smart thing to do. Give you a lot of, um, it'll tell you a lot about what's going on inside of the engine, how it's burning the fuel or not burning the fuel. Indications of oil being burned or running too rich are all things that you can find on the tip by examining on this one. This one's a little fouled out. Um, other than that, no signs of any other uh, thing really going on with it, honestly. But that's just one. We got three more to look at. Uh, overall, horrible condition. So we rotated our engine by hand just to get this in TDC or top dead center. And on your camshafts, you have a mark on the actual cam itself, and then you actually will line it up with the cap that is appropriate for its camshaft. So if you look over here, we'll get a close up of that. I've got the cams lined up according to where they need to be by, by Yamaha service manual. So I've got it lined up here and I've got it lined up here. And we'll zoom in on that so you can see what top dead center looks like and where those cams need to be in relation to each other and the actual caps. So you've got this hole right here and we're gonna line it up with this mark right here. You've got almost, we got a little arrow too, kinda. Got an arrow here and a cap there and then you're gonna do it on this one too. I've got a cam here and I've got a mark right there on the actual cap itself. So you can see that we're lined up and this is top dead center of the engine. When you're taking these camshaft bearings and retainers assemblies apart, make sure to pay attention to your orientation. This one is stamped EX, that is your exhaust camshaft. IN is on this one, this is your intake camshaft. If you can't quite remember the orientation, take a picture or two of the orientation of where these are. You also have arrows, they're pointing to the front of the engine because that's the way this needs to go back on the engine when you are ready for reassembly. Carefully placing things in a nice situated orderly manner is going to help you in the long run to put this thing back together and to know how it goes back together as well. All of these are mated to each other. These surfaces are mated to this camshaft and this block and this orientation on the actual cylinder head. What could happen is you could actually change the clearance and it'll not allow as much oil to the camshaft as before. It could also damage the camshaft if you don't have the right orientation on there and wear it out much quicker than it should. This is your timing chain tensioner. We removed it out of the side of the block. It's maintaining tension on this chain. It's fed oil pressure through that oil line that was off the side over there. And it maintains the pressure on the actual chain assembly to make sure that it's tight and it's not flopping around or anything like that. We'll show you how to reinstall this the correct way because when you get a new one, it'll usually be compressed all the way in. And we'll show you how to install that too when we get back to putting this timing back together and all reassembled in here. But Looks like it's been doing its job pretty well. So I want to remove the drive gear that's down here where the oil pump was mounted. There is another chain tensioner um, or a chain guide, I apologize, timing chain guide in here. I'd like to remove it before I lift the cylinder head out of here. Now when you're removing this, you're going to have to get it from here and then you need to hold the crankshaft on the other side with a special tool that was provided to us from our friends at SBT. This is what you're going to use to hold that drive coupler back there, one side, and then remove it with the other side. The other thing that you're going to need to pay attention to, Yamaha says turn this clockwise. So that means if you're trying to loosen this bolt, it's reverse thread. So we're going to hope for the best and see if we can get this to crack loose. And I have an assistant to help me with that. There it goes.
All right, Wes. Clockwise. Clockwise. It should be set up for you. Hopefully, it'll. Hopefully, it works. Did it loosen? Yep. Oh, you the man. Beautiful. So success, that is loosened up. Uh, you may see people that have used pry bars or large screwdrivers to hold that in place. Um, I assure you this tool provided to us by SBT is the proper way to hold this in place to not prevent any damage to this that could cause problems down the road for this. This one holds it in place, it only goes in one way, nice secure fit, allows us to loosen that bolt up um, to get access to everything real nice. So we're getting ready to remove the cylinder head. The cylinder head is on top and is separated by the head gasket down here. You've probably heard that term a lot, head gasket failures are uh, not necessarily coming on this engine, but they happen on other engines out in the industry, whether it's automotive or, or marine. Uh, the cylinder head itself up here is where our springs and our valves are. These are what are allowing that air fuel vapor in and the exhaust side is allowing them to leave after we've gone through our compression and our power stroke. The cylinder head itself may be a different material than the block. This is, um, that's also common. So sometimes that gasket could fail in the middle. Common failures of a head gasket include water uh, or coolant mix with the oil um, or a misfire because it's running poorly as two cylinders are almost sharing the same cylinder when it becomes split in the middle, which is common right here in the center of a four cylinder engine. Removing the cylinder head itself can be, uh, um, could be a little heavy. You're removing this entire component here. After you've removed all the bolts, which I have done, we're going to remove the entire cylinder head. Sometimes you might want a, a, a partner to help you out, depending on how heavy it is. But once you have that off, we should be able to leave it just like this. And this one's not too bad. I can set it over here myself. You'll notice I left all the valve components still inside the head. We're gonna cover rebuilding this entire head with new springs, new valves, um, and all the components in there at a later time. So now I just left everything in here as it was. If you did take this apart and you were starting to remove these, make sure you put them back in the exact same order if you had to reuse them and had to remove them in any way, which we'll touch again a little bit later on when we go over the actual cylinder head re um, rebuilding on this. But for now, I'm setting it off to the side so I can get the access to the lower half of this engine and start seeing what it looks like inside the lower half. And this is your head gasket. Your head gasket failures, your number one on a four cylinder is right in this area right here. So you're always looking to see if there's any damage to this uh, when you take these apart. I'm not seeing any, this had no evidence of actually a head gasket failure, but I do want to take a look at it and see what the condition of it was before I um, disassemble it. We were again burning oil, but this head gasket does look like it's uh, structurally, integrally uh, good. So. Um, we don't reuse head gaskets, you never reuse head gaskets, so we will be replacing this with a new one from SBT when we reinstall everything back together. But for now, what I wanna do is I'm gonna tear this rest of this block down so I can start seeing what the pistons and, and the actual cylinder walls look like themselves. We remove this, just like on the other side, this is actually reverse thread, so keep that in mind when you're actually loosening this up. Hold this in place, and then you'll get your tool and then you're gonna remove this bolt here, or this large, 12 millimeter Allen um, bolt there that they use for this coupler right here. Now to remove the coupler, we need not only this tool again, but we also need another tool that is provided to us from SBT. So we have this that they provided to us, it's our coupler holder. But we also now need a crankshaft holder provided to us again by SBT to be able to remove the coupler so I can start getting this generator cover off of this engine. This will go in here. It's supposed to, there we go. Now, let's see if I can get another socket on that. During disassembly, we ran into a little bit of a challenge. Removing the drive coupler required some extra TLC, and I had to call in some additional elbow grease to get these things loosened up. 
Once the drive coupler was removed, we ran into another challenge removing the generator cover, eventually also the transfer shaft. Yay! Once we had it all apart, we were able to pull off the oil pan and have access to the crankcase. Now normally in a situation like this, when we're removing crankshaft and connecting rods, you know, we've got the girdle off right here that held this all into place. Now normally when you're removing a connecting rod and a piston assembly, you're gonna to wanna to mark them and they also need to go back in the exact same position that they were. SBT has provided us a new crankshaft, connecting rods and pistons. So that's why if you're watching the video going, he's not marking those, well, I don't need to. I do have new ones that we're going to install in this. But if you are watching this and you're wanting to learn a little bit how this is done, make sure that each one stays with their respective cylinder hole. Also, the position of the piston has a certain orientation, so make sure it goes back in if you're reusing any of those parts. These rods are built, or they're cast as one unit, and then they're fractured to break the caps off. So we're talking about the importance of marking these rods and the caps and their orientation and what number they go in. These can only go back on the rods from which they were fractured off of. So now that we have the piston out, you've got, your, you've got rings on your pistons that are designed to keep compression in, oil from leaving as well. Um, and that's what I'm suspecting is one of these is gonna be failed, causing this to be burning so much oil that it has been. Um, Always look at, take a look at your skirts, and then when we're all done, we're gonna clean up those cylinders and take a look at the condition of the cylinders as well. The next step that we're gonna get into is we're going to clean all of the engine block uh, and then start doing our inspections. Uh, I'm gonna wanna get all this old oil out of there and kinda look around for any cracks, any signs of any damage. Um, I'm gonna take a closer look at the piston rings and then uh, kinda see what's going on with those. And uh, after that, we'll put a nice little hone on the actual cylinder itself, get that cleaned up and we'll start reassembling.